found Sam and I found Joachim. How's it going, man? Good, how are you? So uh, it looks like you've got a, a bunch of different modules that connect through the software and you can drag and drop and make basically Bluetooth chains of them and then they do stuff? You're explaining it better than I can. Sam's a growing family of wireless building blocks that talk to each other without wires. So here we've got a, a proximity sensor connected to a code module and a Twitter account. It's one of our more complicated systems. Uh, if you've got a Twitter handle, we can just put it in and connect it to our fridge such that when the fridge opens, it sends you and you, take a, and you take a drink, it sends you a Twitter message. That's one of our more complicated systems. If you go onto the next screen, we'll show you how we can actually make easy systems. Here we've actually connected a button to uh, a lamp, a fan, and a motor. And so when I press this button, uh, it all actuates out of the box without a problem. The range is up to 30 meters. It's all got its own Bluetooth chip on and uh, its own LiPo battery and a rechargeable cell. What's the favorite way that you use it? The favorite way I use it is uh, to prototype pretty crazy systems. I mean, an easy one that we've just done today with, uh, with a kid that came around was, wait, I'll need to grab, I need to grab. So you can just really, really easily start doing pretty crazy stuff uh, that kids love, like this. Or you can also do machines that talk to Twitter, uh, that tell you what your grocery yeah. list should be or uh, responsive shoes or uh, internet connected skateboards. Oh, wait, wait. So this is internet connected and you have a heat sensor so you could hook this up in your computer to know if, if, if inside of your chassis gets too hot, yeah. send you a tweet. Send you a tweet or send you a text message. Uh, oh, nice. So you said you have SMS as well? Yeah. Very handy. All right, and how can people find you on the internet? Uh, they go to www.samlabs.me. Uh, we've got a Facebook uh, profile and we've got a Twitter as well. It's at Powered by Sam. We'll be launching very soon on Kickstarter, so check us out. All right, you guys, stay tuned for that. We found ProtoPallet, and this is a very interesting device. We're here with Carl. You're the uh, the maker of this thing yes, here at Maker Fair. So this thing, this device, basically, lets you put an Arduino here, and then try everything. Yeah, it's, it's basically made for free thought. So you want to put it in your head and down here. It's very quick to do. So let's go through everything it can do. This isn't all the sensors, but uh, yeah. so you got an audio sensor here. This is your stepper motor driver, so that will run this stepper motor. You have a, just a clock module. This is a infrared blaster, so you could like control a TV or what have you. This is a relay, so you could control outside devices that run off 110 power. This is a analog temperature sensor. This is a photoelectric sensor, senses light if you cover it. It's a heartbeat monitor. You have a, a this is a Hall effect magnetic sensor. And it's a magnetic read switch. And in here would be another audio sensor when you get it, so that you can do stereotypes. Underneath, you have another PCB that has four RGB LEDs, which are these. And these will display any color. Around the whole rim is red, green, blue, 24 times all the way around. And those all connect back to a patch bay here. And these are your swatches. They connect to this patch bay here. This is for your lower RGBs that I just explained. This is for your RGB swatch right here. All of your switches are connected up to this patch bay, kind of the same relation. I try to keep everything so you can quickly understand where you're going with things. So you got a, a logarithmic and a linear potentiometer, got two lighted rocker switches. These are momentary buttons. These are toggles. One is locking and one is momentary. Underneath you have a RF sensor, a gyroscope accelerometer, a buzzer, a vibration sensor, and the RF is controlled back to this wireless remote so you can make it do just about anything you like. And it really comes, it does nothing when you receive it. Right. It just brings things into a great spot for you to quickly prototype and quickly put your thoughts right down on your hand. So that's, I mean, it's going to be for people who are learning, people who are developing a product, and they exactly, want to prototype yeah. it right here. They've got everything, you, almost everything you can think of right that's here. I'm trying to make it that way, yes. And, uh, and I think it would serve to educate somebody, but then later in life, they're going to have it, and they're going to want to use it for anything. You guys have a Kickstarter going on right now? We do, yeah. We've already made goal, but we want to push way past it. Why not? You better believe it. That was awful. <laughs> I, I, I would like to make beer at home. Takes a lot of time, but uh, we have a solution here. What, what's the solution? This is called Beery, and basically what you have here is you stick your grains on one side. This is your pot, 
It sits on the stove in here with water. You connect to this microcontroller here with this phone and this app and you program it. It's got a temperature sensor. As the temperature gets, of this water gets to certain temperatures, it circulates it through this grain. There's a filter at the bottom to keep the grains in this pot. Pumps it back in here, boils it. After an hour boil with your hops, pumps it back in here for chilling. Once it's chilled, you're ready to ferment. In this side, basically this is pressurized fermentation. You can uh, control how much PSI you want to ferment at by the number of uh, relief gauges that you have. Each one of these is about three PSI, so that's three PSI. This will be nine PSI. Uh, then when you're ready to finally drink it, you can reforce carbonize it right here with a little handheld uh, pressurizer. You're ready to drink it. You can throw some ice on this. You're going to be drinking about 10 degrees lower temperature than what you got in the keg. How are you controlling all this? And, what, and what's this right here? This is interesting. So this is just a, an open source app that enables you to program the microcontroller uh, via Bluetooth right here. And this is simple Arduino language. So you're actually talking to the pins directly. So you're either setting zero to 100 percent PWM. You're getting analog values from the pins. You're setting up conditions, if greater, if less than. And then you got a sleep timer that lets you basically time stuff. And basically this is the circuit for that machine that I'm printing right here with this conductive ink. And that's my blog. It shows you how to stick the parts down with some tape and a little microcontroller board and you can make your own. And that just plugs right into your Admel, Arduino, whatever? Yep, so in this case it's a, it's a TI Launchpad. The code is open source. Uh, it, it happens to be running on Launchpad, but it's, it's an Arduino sketch. It'll run on Admel. This is awesome. <laughs> That's pretty much all I have to say about it. This is freaking awesome. Thanks very much. All right. We're here with James, and this is the first 3D printed car in the world, right? It is. So uh, just go ahead and tell us everything, man. Tell you everything. All right. Well, so we printed the car in just over, just about 44 hours for the structure of the vehicle, which is everything you see here, basically, except for the fenders. We printed those separately. Um, and then after we were done printing it, we took it off the printer with a forklift and put it on a five axis shaper or a five axis router and routed what you see is cleaned up a little bit just for aesthetic purposes, you know, make it look nice. And then uh, took out a little bit on the inside so, so the brackets fit down nice and tight. And then we assembled it in just over two days and uh, then we drove it off. How fast can it go? It'll do about 40 miles an hour right now. But the interesting thing about that is the motor is kind of independent from the rest of the car. So you change out the motor for a faster motor and you can do a lot faster. Speaking of the motor, like, um what kind of stuff could you put in there? I mean, is it, is it like electrical right now? Or? It's an electric motor right now. We could do basically anything you wanted. We could do natural gas, um, electric, internal combustion, uh, sterling. No, we're not going to do sterling engine, but you know, we could do a lot of cool stuff with it. It's just, it's just, you can form fit the, the design of the car to whatever you want to have inside. Now, are these going to be street legal? They will be. This one is not right now, but they will be when we start selling them. So where are you guys based out of? We are based out of Phoenix, Arizona, though we have locations in Knoxville, Tennessee, uh, Las Vegas, and in Germany right now. What kind of printer does it take to print this? A very big one. Like a Canon bubble jet with a modified head, right? <laughs> no, not, not so much. Um, so we actually helped develop the printer at the same time. The printer was kind of built for this project, and then they're selling it, but it's one Cincinnati Incorporated made. Uh, called the Cincinnati BAM, and uh, it was developed in conjunction with Oak Ridge National Lab, who were kind of the, the brains behind the actual printing tech side of this. The, along with me, but you know, the the, the printing side of the technology. All right, so how long do you think it'll be until you can just go out and get either the schematics? Is this going to be open source? This is a, should already be online. I think it already is online. You, you can already. Yeah, go to localmotors.com, search for the 3D printed car. Uh, actually, it'll probably pop up right when you get there because it's a pretty big deal right now. Um, and if the STL file is not already up, it will be up soon. Awesome. Let us know what you guys think in the comments. Let's take one more look at it. Thanks a lot. Everything should be co covered in metal, like nickel and copper and what else? Silver? Anybody? Silver? No? Silver yet? Not yet. All right, so here's what we, we do here. They've got a 3D printer. It's Dorbit 1, and um, they're out of Sai 1. And uh, what they allow you to do is, after you're finished, you spray it with a conductive layer. Where's that, uh, where's that spray at? Yes, here. Not to be confused with, like, cologne or something. You don't want to get this. Is it okay to spray it on you? Can, like, can I get, like, metal over here, you know? Yeah, no problem. Yeah, just spray it all over. You have, like, one gold here. Only if you're doing your uh, cybernetic yeah. repairs. Exactly. In the field, it's, it's, the, it's the Android in the field repair kit. Yeah, I have to use it in my head sometimes. And then after you're finished, you can brush it on or whatever, and then you end up with some finished products like this, but the interesting thing is, is you can also use a 3D printer to make like a PCB, you can even make the copper layers. Um, so 
I, you have to go in there and brush the traces by hand, but you could do it. Pretty interesting. Device from Orbit One here.